the 1997 20th anniversary Macintosh was only ever released with a single processor option, a 250MHz PowerPC 603E. And although there were a few upgrade cards released for it during its short life, they were weird cash card upgrades that only worked under classic Mac OS, not BOS or Linux, and crucially, not Mac OS X. Well, I just got back from VCF East, where DOS Dude one brought his entire BGA soldering setup. And we did the impossible by swapping the onboard 603E processor for a full-fledged G3, something that has never been tried before. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the idea of deeply technical computer modifications as performance art, or you're wondering what the heck that could possibly mean, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So this weird boy is our friendly neighborhood Tam, the 20th anniversary Macintosh that we've done a ton of weird stuff to, from pedestrian things like fixing all the internals from spare parts from a power book that we had laying around, to questionable design choices like Reclothing the ratty old speaker fabric in this black speaker cloth, like the prototypes had. And I'm glad so many of you are with me on that choice. And we've done some weird stuff to it, like taking the only G3 upgrade that was ever available for it and swapping in a G4. If you haven't seen any of those shenanigans, I'll link to some of them right here. Well, today, we're taking things way further, because we've done an upgrade that, to my knowledge, has never even been attempted before. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, let's start with a quick rundown of the problem that we're solving. And by problem, I mean roadblock to using this thing as it was never intended. You see, the 20th anniversary Macintosh, for as bespoke and futuristic as it looks, is basically a hodgepodge of 90s Macintosh desktop and PowerBook parts shoved into an interesting case. And although it was only officially upgradable using its single PCI slot and COM slot 2, in reality, you could shove upgrades in here meant for other Macs, especially the Power Mac 6500, which basically is this thing's logic board. You could fit the 6500's dual PCI riser card in there and it would work just fine, although put a little too much pressure on the slot. And even better, you could use these cache slot CPU upgrades in there, which could give this upgrade challenged machine a G3. And with a little soldering wizardry, a G4. And that's awesome, but still weirdly limited. Let's take a closer look at how this cache card upgrade works and I'll show you what I mean. The processor in machines like the 6500 and by extension the TAM was never meant to be upgraded. And in fact, Apple kind of specifically designed it to not be upgradable. However, back in the 90s, companies like Sonnet had kind of an arms race on upgrading otherwise non-upgradable Macintoshes. And for machines based on this motherboard, they came up with this, which doesn't actually replace the processor on the motherboard, it bypasses it. This installs into the cache slot, which otherwise would be just a cache card, and via an extension in classic Mac OS, the machine initializes this processor, forgets about the old 603, and then just runs off of this. And that is excellent for your classic Mac OS based shenanigans, but if you want to do any other kind of non Mac OS shenanigans or even Mac OS 10 shenanigans, well, those operating systems don't have an extension that can initialize this card. And thus those OSs will only work off of the original 603E, which in BOS is okay. And in Mac OS 10 is a little bit no good. So fast forward to this past weekend. I was at VCF East, which is a wonderful three day celebration of vintage computing in Wall, New Jersey. Also exhibiting this year was world famous soldering wizard DOS Dude One, who brought along an entire BGA soldering setup and was doing live BGA rework during the show as what I can only describe as engineering performance art. 
Lately, Colin has been CPU swapping various Power Macs that had specific surface mount 603E processors for G3 740s, which are pin compatible. One such machine being the Power Mac 6500, which is the same exact motherboard nearly as what's in this TAM. I fully documented everything for your viewing pleasure, and I'll show you right after this word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. Not only does PCBWay offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, they also offer on-site PCB assembly, and they can source some of the components with their turnkey service. But I bet your project needs more than just PCBs. Well, PCBWay now offers a ton of additional services, high quality 3D printing, injection molding, they even offer CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. Literally every part of your next project can be prototyped and built with PCBWay. So if you have any PCB or prototyping needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. So funny enough, this upgrade wasn't even planned beforehand. Colin mentioned to me on Saturday that the TAM's processor might be G3 swappable with the gear that he brought. And in fact, there was a 50-50 shot that we could do it because, well, some 6500 motherboards had a surface mount processor and some of them had a QFP socketed processor. Now, given how annoying and fragile the TAM is to take apart, I was a bit worried at first, but by Sunday, I realized, when am I ever gonna have this chance again with the gear there and the processors there? So I'm sure you can guess the decision that I made. So I tore into this thing with a crowd watching and took it apart further than I've ever disassembled it before. And putting the TAM's logic board next to the 6500 was really interesting. They were nearly identical. The TAM even has this weird hacked on breakout board where the audio jack would normally be. I mean, it's almost comical. Anyway, Colin fired up his impressive full tables worth of rework station and gear, and he pulled out the pile of 740 series G3s that he brought along. And I suspect that he always has a pile of early G3s on him, at all times, in case of emergency. Anyway, as he set up the board on the preheater and he got the rework station ready, a pretty sizable audience gathered because VCF East was packed. Colin wasn't phased in the least. A bit of flux around the old boring 603E, some directed heat applied, and off it came. Next, he cleaned the pads and got ready with the G3, freshly prepped with solder balls. A generous application of flux, careful placement, and a bit of directed heat, and on it goes. Honestly, it took me more time to disassemble and reassemble the TAM than it took to actually do the CPU swap. Now, the G3 required some adjustments to the voltage and frequency resistors, and <laughs> funny enough, donor resistors came from a dead MacBook Pro board. So technically, there's a bit of MacBook Pro inside this TAM now too. First boot up test was a success, and <laughs> note that at this point, the TAM is entirely held together by a single totally normal computing sticker, which is totally normal. And the thing just worked. It booted first try, and more importantly, BOS was now running on the G3, and it was fast as all get out. So now we have the world's first and only native G3 TAM. But just what can one do with a native G3 TAM? Shenanigans. Here, let me give you a quick tour. So let's actually start this tour here in BOS because that's actually Honestly, the most interesting thing to me, because if you'll remember, BOS was only running on the 603E before, even though we had that G4 card on there. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you, it makes a heck of a difference. I had this running BOS at VCF on display, and when it was on the 603E, doing something like running Sheep Shaver to emulate Mac OS, on top of BOS, which is, of course, hilarious. Well, it worked, but it was slow. And if you tried to do something like run Wolfenstein 3D, it would barely run. But now, check this out. 
it is playable. I mean, a little bit of a slideshow, but before it was literally unplayable on anything but a postage stamp. And now if we set the screen size to something a bit smaller, it is pretty good. And again, let me remind you, this is a Mac running a third party OS, BOS, emulating Mac OS, which does kind of pass through the processor, but still, this is a lot of layers here. Now that's all well and good, but let me show you something native. There was a PowerPC version of Doom released for BOS, which worked pretty well, but it was very, very slow. Now look at it. It is like screaming on here. Oh man, smooth as butter. I had to put it down to like a postage stamp on the original processor. It's got music, it's got the sound effects. Incredible. It's still a bit dark. I think maybe I can play with the color depth of the system a bit, but look at it. Buttery, silky smooth. Never said I was good at it. So that's BOS. Now, incredibly, and for the very first time ever, not only running on an unsupported Macintosh, the 20th anniversary Mac, but running on an unsupported processor inside of an unsupported Macintosh, oh my goodness, that is a lot of layers of awesome. Okay, now let me show you a couple things under classic Mac OS, and then as you may have guessed, we're gonna see about Mac OS 10, at least if it can boot the installer. After we did this upgrade, I spent an inordinate amount of time just sitting at our exhibit playing Wolfenstein 3D on here because although it played pretty well before, it is now buttery smooth and especially paired with this SFX Plus ADB controller, this is freaking awesome. Look how smooth and fast it is. I cannot believe it. I was calling this thing my uh, bootleg Apple Pippin. <laughs> oh man. Okay, and now the moment that you may or may not have been waiting for. What happens when we try to boot Mac OS X on this thing? And uh, to give you a little context why that's so interesting, well, if you read up online about trying to boot Mac OS X on a TAM, you'll read lots of accounts of this bricking the TAM. However, I'm sure it's possible. I think the issue is open firmware resolution, but I think some of that might be negated by this just now being a native G3 machine, meaning it should boot Mac OS X no problem. Anyway, let's just see if we can get Mac OS X's installer to boot on this thing and just make sure the installer can see that we're on a G3. So to boot 10.2 Jaguar, we technically don't even need any hacks like ex post facto. And in fact, 10.2 Jaguar should work on a 603E processor. Although actually the box for this says that it requires a G3 or G4 with 128 megs of RAM. So anyway, let's see if it'll run on our newly created G3. No. All right, we will need ex post facto. And actually, in order to use ex post facto, we have to go back into the IDE SSD. It won't work on the SATA drive because the SATA drive needs a weird NVRAM script. Anyway, I won't bore you with that right now. We'll save all that stuff for the official video installing Mac OS X on this thing. For now, let me just gloss over some of that, go back to the IDE drive and try to boot it with ex post facto. All right, so I've tried all sorts of things here. I've tried booting from different CD-based versions. I've tried booting from real media, burned media, uh, different versions of Mac OS X, and it just does not want to actually boot into the installer. I think I'm going to have to do a bunch more tinkering because I know it's possible. I'm 100, well, 
99.5% sure it's possible to boot Mac OS X on here, but I'm not gonna do that tinkering today. I'll save that for a bonus video where we will trial and error through a whole bunch of stuff to try to get Mac OS X's installer to at least boot. And if you enjoy that kind of thing, Patreon tiers start at just a buck and you get access to things like bonus videos and other shenanigans. But I'm gonna call this video here and uh, yeah, holy crap, the world's only native G3 TAM. <laughs> My mind is blown. I can't believe that I have this. Thank you, DOS Dude One, for, well, doing this at VCF East. Uh, always awesome to hang out with you, and your shenanigans are second to none. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see what I'm going to do next with the world's only G3 native TAM, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Kamela Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, Greg Hrutke, Harris Brody, Jason Papaz, Justin Hemmings, Justin Reed, Lyle Truid, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.